Hi everybody, Randy Peterson here for Storm Bowling and Rotor Grip. Today we're going to talk about some basic bowling techniques. Let's start with the approach. And this is going to hold true for beginning bowlers, for league bowlers, and for tournament bowlers. I believe there's only one approach to use, especially when learning how to bowl, and that's a four-step approach. Whether you're right-handed or left-handed, what I want you to do is I want you to start the right hand, the ball, and that same foot together. So if you're right-handed, the right hand bowling ball and first step, which would be with your right foot, go together. If you're left-handed, just turn it around. Hey, we've talked about the four-step approach. Now I'm gonna to talk to, about the five-step approach, and it's real simple. All you're gonna do is add an extra step without moving the bowling ball. So for right-handers, that would be the left foot moving first, then the right, foot and the bowling ball moving together. That's going from four to five steps. Why would you do that, you ask? Well, a lot of times you, want, you might want to generate more ball speed. You add an extra step, get the feet moving a little bit faster, hey, voila, instant ball speed. Next, we're gonna talk about how timing works. You know, all of my teachings throughout the world, I get asked a lot, hey, how does timing work? It's real simple. Timing is when and how the ball is initiated into the swing. So for example, if the bowling ball is initiated very, very quickly and very fast before any steps are taken, we call that early timing. So what that does is it forces the feet to run to try to catch up with the arm swing and the bowling ball. On the flip side of that, if we start walking before we push the bowling ball, now we're gonna have real late timing. So the feet are gonna slow down so that the swing can sink back up. One of the keys or one of the tips I'd like to give you to put you in time is I want you to imagine that there's a string tied from the back of your hand to the big toe on your right foot if you're right-handed. The hand and the foot cannot work independent of one another. They have to work together. So for perfect timing, that right foot and that hand have to move together. And if you have a shoulder-high backswing or just slightly above shoulder-high, I want the bowling ball to be at about a 45-degree angle when you push the ball away from you. This will set you up and put you in perfect timing and give you the best opportunities to throw a lot of strikes. Hey, coming up next, we're going to talk about the correct way to set up and also how to create a pendulum arm swing. 